Welcome back to Online Darts, everyone. We've got the man himself, Mr. Hawaii 501, Wayne Mardle. Wayne, the world is on the horizon. Are we excited yet? Yeah, I, I am actually, yeah. Yeah, we're, we're here at, at Minehead right now. So I'm getting a kind of a, a gauge of what the players are doing and, and not doing. There's some that, you know, they don't just spring to mind uh, at, at this precise moment. Uh, it's the day after Cameron Menzies beat, beat Josh Rock. Uh, Cammy in the draw could, could be one. Who, who knows? Uh, who knows what this kind of how uh, this unfolds? But it's exciting. You've got the 32 seeds, then the 32 on the Pro Tour in the draw, and then the 32 international qualifiers of of which you've got you've got Bo Greaves in there. Good good luck with that one. Yeah, look, it's going to be interesting. Right now, Michael Van Gerwen is the favourite, and do you agree with that sentiment? Uh, he was favourite before a dart was thrown. Uh, now with the demise of of Michael Smith and Ghetto in Price, and don't forget that Peter Wright wasn't even in the field. He's clear favourite. I think Johnny Clayton's next at like nine to one. Michael's sort of a five to two shot. Uh, Michael Van Gerwen is now the favourite to start every single event. Uh, the world's is now three to one, and rightfully so. He's the, he's, he's the best, most reliable player on the planet for me right now. On the world's, obviously Peter Wright not here in Minehead, and won't have thrown a competitive dart since Wolverhampton, where obviously we know his mind wasn't on it, and the look, family first, and we totally respect that. But is there a worry that he hasn't thrown a competitive dart, and maybe a little bit undercooked for the world's? Uh, it's, a, it's a good point. I, I hadn't thought of it in great, great detail, but maybe the thing what I will say is that Peter's one of these that he, he, seem, he gets it right for the world's, doesn't he? Uh, last year he come here, he won this. This is after having a run in the Grand Slam as well. Uh, so we know he can keep the form up for a long time, but he's got to find the form now, which you kind of just alluded to. If anyone could, I believe it could be him because he, he manages himself really well. He doesn't want to go into the world's... Uh, hi, hi. He doesn't want to go into the world's having uh, doubts. Uh, if he has, we'll find out straight away because we could see he was out of sorts uh, due to uh, Joe's situation, his wife. He was out of sorts at the Grand Slam. So I'm, I'm hoping everything's great because uh, a world's without a peak right is not, not right for us. As well, if I'd have said to you at the start of this year that the Iceman Gallery and Price hasn't won a TV major this year, would you have said I was drunk? Uh, again, yeah, yeah, you, you get <laughs> drunk in vibes a lot. Uh, yeah, do you know what? He's played well enough to win a bit as well. Don't forget how well he was playing in the match play. He, he was unplayable and he was be, he was favourite to beat Van Gerwen in a match play final. The, the bookies got it wrong. Uh, Michael got it right on the night, but Gedewin didn't play that well in that final. So he's had his chances, uh, but it just shows you that winning TV events is difficult. It really is. Michael Smith would have come here on the back of the Grand Slam thinking... I'll do this as well. Then I'll do the Worlds, and then the Worlds even more right. Look, like I said, darts is difficult. Richie Edhouse hit an incredible double eight. Have another go, Richie. You won't hit that again, pal. Uh, it, it was an amazing dart, and in the end, he got he got beat by that. But Gedwin Price, can you you can't rule him out of having a run or maybe winning the Worlds because when he's on, he wins. Raymond Van Barneveld at the. At, now there's at, a blast. Well. Did anyone see this coming? Because you were critical of him in his final year, rightly so as well, because yeah. the attitude and demeanour was, yeah. was poor. But this has came from nowhere. And that smile was back. That Barney swagger was back. Where's this come from? Yeah, I, I was just watching him around the, uh, the, the the press room and the way he was talking. And as you know, at the Grand Slam, there's a big, long corridor. You bump into players all the time. And just chatting with him, and he was so laid back, he was so happy, his life is going well, there's not drama in it. Uh, he now turns up with without that much expectation, but knowing that he can exceed those expectations, and I think he's just happy to, to be playing darts at the level he is right now. Uh, did I see that run coming? No, no, I, I, I didn't. Beating Gedewin Price over best of 25. Uh, sorry, 31. Seriously, uh, that was that was incredible. Uh, another one for the in the draw for the Worlds. You, you won't want to draw him. Uh, someone will, and I think someone will come unstuck against him because at the moment he will feel that if his game can keep along that standard for another four or five weeks uh, or peak at the Worlds, then... Does he have a chance to win it? I'm not going to say he's going to win number six, but if he if the opportunity arises, I think he'll take it. Josh Rock, a man that's on everyone's lips right now. We saw him produce some fabulous stuff this year, push Michael Van Gogh to the limit. Goes off fifth favourite at the moment. 
I know we do this a lot in, in media and we hype people and the stories are there to tell, but do we just need to be just cool it a little bit and just let the young man play and develop? He seems like he's handling it quite well. And like I've already alluded to, Cami Menzies playing fantastic against him. Josh played well, but wasn't consistent. At the Grand Slam, he played well and got beat by peak Van Gerwen. What a performance that was. Uh, this, is, this kind of smacks Rob Cross. But Rob Cross, like when Rob won in 2018, it was his first Worlds coming as fifth or sixth favourite. This is similar to, to those odds. But Rob Cross had already reached the final of like the Europeans or something ridiculous. Three Euro to a final. Yeah, uh, yeah, and he'd done a lot more than Josh. Yeah. But where I think that Josh Rock has got it right is that he seems to not care about the hype. Or if he does, he's hiding it really well. And I think he's got a good head on his shoulders. But I've, I said at the Grand Slam, remember saying vividly, whoever's, whoever's uh, around him really needs to, to control what's going on around him. I, I want his mum and dad around him. That's what I want. Because I know for a fact that they want what's best. They don't want to cut. They don't want 20, 30% of all the what's going on. They just want their son to do best. And uh, I'm hoping that that stays like that for a long time because he's had his, his issue with, issues with management. And at the age of 21, and he's still so raw, he's so inexperienced. Uh, who knows where it goes? We've, we've seen youngsters uh, climb to near the, the top before and, and fall dramatically. Uh, do I think it'll happen to him? No, I do not. But he still needs the right people around him. I, I hope, he, uh, I, I hope he, he throws with a freedom that we know he can. First time in history as well, three ladies will be at the World Championships. What was your take on the whole announcement and the way it was all done? Uh, I, I'm not a fan. Uh, I don't like the way that the, the PDC just kind of bent the rules and changed the rules to get Fallon Sherrick in. But I, I want to put this out there. Sorry, there's someone at my door. That's a ring doorbell. It was probably the, the wife having a, a takeaway or something. <laughs> she does that when I'm not there to cook. Uh, I made this clear on, on social media that this is not Fallon's fault. I feel for Fallon here because she was getting a little bit of hatred and jealousy thrown her away before this and they've now put her in an awkward position. It's a, it's a privileged position, let's not get that uh, mixed up, where she will take uh, a, a cut of, of the prize money that's well over a, a million pounds now and I, I feel for her because she won the world match play, the women's world match play. If the PDC had said then the women's world match play champion goes in the world, there's not a problem. They've just left it so late. They've left it so late. Bo Greaves took the, the number two spot, which we were led to believe was the only spot available because Lisa, Lisa Ashton had sewn up number one. Uh, the PDC can do what they like. It's their products. They are the, they are the uh, governing body and they're the promoter of the PDC. Uh, what they've done for darts, uh, they know what they're doing better than I do. I'm, I'm no businessman. Uh, but I just I think that Fallon's going to get a lot more hate thrown away, and I just hope that that's not the case. I want to be really wrong, and do you know what? I would love her to win a game, just to just to put it right, just to put it right. I, I feel for her right now, and people go, "How can you feel for someone that's been given a privilege?" Uh, I just think that it might be easier for her uh, if she hadn't been given that spot. Forget the the monetary kind of compensation. Uh, she played in some World Series events, four of them that ultimately cost the number two. Uh, it took Bo Greaves winning eight events on the bounce to, to knock her off that, that second perch. Uh, but they didn't know that at the time. And maybe the, the PDC felt compelled to, to give her a spot. I just, I don't want her to bear the brunt of it because it's not fair on her. We spoke to Matt Porb at the World Grand Prix and we asked him about that spot and he said it was decided then. We played the clip out that it was already decided. <clears throat> what was going on with that right, spot. Right. So if that had been decided then, do you feel that should have been announced before then instead of hyping up the women's series? Because it was hyped, the race for yeah. Ali Pali, Bo versus Fallon, when by the look of it, it had already been decided. Yeah, you, you're 100% right. It should have been announced. Maybe it was just a, 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 mistimed, a mistimed press release by the PDC. And let's be fair, they've, they've not mistimed a step since 1992 or three, whenever it is. Uh, so I'll, I'll kind of forget that. Uh, with that, but I, like I said, my concern is about the player. Like you've already mentioned, Josh Rock. I want his mum and dad to, to get hold of him, and I, I want uh, Fallon's management to, to maybe keep her away from social media. Impossible nowadays. Impossible unless you own a, a Nokia 3210, uh, which I don't think many people do anymore. Uh, that has a battery life of nine years. Uh, I, it's impossible. But I, again, my concerns for the player. 
and I hope the PDPA can can kind of shield her in a way along with her management and family and and let her just play darts. Last one from me, everyone's talking about the Premier League now as well because all eyes are, are on it and the field has shrunk, we know it's going to be eight players again, the likelihood is the top four will not change barring a massive run from, it from someone at, at the Worlds. Those other four spots, how many players realistically do you think are in the running? And second part of the question, are two TV major winners this year, in your opinion, going to miss out on the Premier League in Noppet and Ross Smith? I, I think it's it's a real contentious issue this year. Obviously, you get, you got the top four, uh, but I, it's it's <laughs> Michael Van Gerwen's giving me a hard time just just because I'm <laughs> I'm existing basically. Uh, I think it's really awkward this year because you can look down as far as as Dave Chisnell, you can uh, Dirk Van Dyvenbode is not. As at the time of speaking, yeah, yeah. at the time of speaking, he, he may go ahead and, and win it here and then he's in the, the top eight. And he's, But there is a recency bias and this has always been the case. The recency bias is if you play well at the Grand Slam, the, the Grand Prix and here, there's a massive recency bias over the Masters uh, that's already got you in one Premier League, remember? Two. Uh, two. Johnny and Joe both got in for the Masters. Yes, yep. But, and, and the yeah, Premier League, yeah, so yeah. it gets you in that year's yeah. Premier League. So you've, you've got that recency bias that I think does get forgotten about. Uh, see, me personally, I'm, I'm all about the product. I'm all about, which is why, again, uh, the PDC have done what they wanted to do with Fallon. I'm on about the entertainment value, because that was the way I, I played the game. Uh, what way are they going to go? Are they going to go doing what's right, or are they going to put in the entertainers? If it's the entertainers, then why not look at uh, Dirk Van Dyven and Bode? Nathan Aspinall should be in, in my opinion. What a little comeback story. That little is the <laughs> final of the Grand Prix and Grand Slam. Uh, why not Dave Chisnell? Uh, that's seven. Uh, I don't see a future in the in the uh, Premier League for Jose de Souza. I'm not sure I do for, for Rob Cross right now. Uh, it's difficult. It really is difficult. But all those players I've just mentioned where I said I don't see if... Why wouldn't they? If they have a run here and, and they do well or win, should they be in it? I think there should be rewards, yeah. And, and why not a Premier League spot? Whoever, whoever gets put in it is, is no skin off my nose whatsoever. They will make it a world-class event with the, the PDC doing what they do, with the fans turning up left, right and centre, with us promoting it the way we do, Sky Sports, ITV, you name it. Uh, we'll, we'll all do our bit. Dirk van Dijven Boda, deep, Mr Deep Heat himself. Uh, <laughs> Uh, again, I've just just advocated Dirk being put in. He's an entertainer away from the hockey, let alone on it. I'm I'm excited for the worlds. Uh, so let's just forget about the Premier League for a minute. Wayne, absolute pleasure as always, mate. Thank you very Cheers, much. Cheers, pal. My pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you.